and welcome back bots and bits fans now it is my absolute pleasure to bring to you the highly anticipated highly debated this week's sexy import with turbo handling toy world m06 layer their masterpiece scale rc well toy world slightly over masterpiece scale rc now if you were paying attention to the early colored test shots of this you'll notice that she is missing a ton of painted detail toy world however have included paint on other areas of her body that i didn't expect but we will cover that right after we go through these accessories first up these swords are just all plastic and the sheaths just sort of slide on the side like this that's just pink plastic and it has like a speckle effect to it it's not a dry brush or anything it's just a very light metallic spray which it looks pretty good silver on the sword is done really well it's just a shame that we have these really prominent injection points on the sword that sort of mess it up a little bit only a little bit depends on what bothers you and what doesn't and then we have the cast white plastic uh, on the hilt here so overall the swords are you know they look good just with the exception of those injection points side, then we have her pistols these pistols i'm really digging the design of these and it has a bored out barrel as well look at that so the silver paint is done pretty well it's really consistent it's really shiny and it's not like a really crappy looking silver it's a very nice gun metal and yeah kudos good work they look good and the weapons also store really well on the sheath for the sword you have these single tabs hang on focus there we go you've got that single tab right there and that just goes straight into her hips that's a nice secure tab in and you can have it whatever angle you want and then when it comes to the pistols they have some very clever storage just in this back panel here do that open this up and you've got a tab just in there grab the handle of the pistol tab that in close this off and put it back on there you go now the last accessory i'll classify these as a whole um, is their swappable hands now a big problem with a lot of these hands is the pegs are too big for the peg holes inside Leia's wrist. You have to give it a good couple of shots. You can see here there's a lot of pink already on that peg where I've been giving it a good push. It takes a lot of the plastic off and it takes off some of the paint inside the peg hole. But I'll bring Leia over and demonstrate them for you. Let's just bring it up. All right, let's get rid of this hand and we'll try, we've got the, what have we got here? The grabbing hand, so let's just chuck that in. Alright, the grabbing hand went in. A bit of a squeak, listen. But not too bad, and only the very slightest gap. Okay, hand next. No, that's that's as far as it wants to go. Every time I twist it, that peg, because it's not a solid plastic, it's like a it's got a little bit of give to it, and it's I can feel it flexing. The hand is moving but the peg isn't, so. It's a bit of a sucky gap. Pointing hand next. It's a bit difficult to grab this because I'm trying not to bend that. Oh, shit, where'd you go? Try not to bend that finger. And it just oh, it really does not want to go in. No, nah, that's it. Huge gap. However, on the other hand, um, I'm pretty sure it does go in. Yeah, so that one, that side goes in pretty well tiniest little gap that side no deal tight as a little disappointing um i mean pretty simple fix i guess let's see so the pegs are just too big and you can see where it's getting up to you just want to take a file to that and just take a little bit of plastic off a feature like this you shouldn't have to do that and you run the risk of taking off too much so not a good start <laughs> That's a, that was a big gimmick of this. That was a very attractive gimmick of this. But yeah, what are you going to do? All right, anyway, on to the rest of the accessories. We have the bonus face for the Toy World Sea Spray. What was his name? Wave Race. <laughs> Waves, uh, I can't remember. I wasn't really uh, too interested in it. Um, yeah, it's just a very basic yellow head. Uh, we also get a few bags of screw hole covers. If they, if those sorts of things bother you. Also, in the box, we get her collector card with some really useless graph on the back, if you care about that. So, for some reason, get a sticker of the card, and we get the instructions, which, 
they're not too bad, but when it comes to the legs and this section here, um, folding the legs in, the position of the feet, it's not entirely clear. And this, and I did have trouble getting the clearance right in this section, but we'll cover that later. All right, let's get some hands back on Leia and talk about her. Oh, I nearly forgot, weapons. So let's just chuck the um, pistol grips back on. Get in there. All right, so the hands, they do hold the pistols really well. They're not loose, they're not tight, they're not flopping about, they're not falling out. Uh, if you bump them, they do, you know, it's not super tight. There's no peg in there or anything. They are just sitting in there, but they hold them well enough. And then when it comes to the swords, use the same pistol grip hands for the swords. Not flopping about, not falling out. There you go. You can hold them upside down just as well. Onto Leia herself. Let's just get rid of these. All right, Leia. She is both a surprise and a disappointment. I'm surprised at the amount of paint overall that's put over the entire body. Most of her body is painted in some shape or form. However, the details, they're not there. For a very detailed figure, they really needed to emphasize it a little bit more with paint, especially when it comes to her face. So let's just have a look. The sculpt isn't too bad, right? It's a little bit anime. The nose is probably a little bit too small and the eyes are a little bit of a funny shape, but it's still, it's, it's a very anime-esque look. And that's where my compliments on the head end. The face just looks like a corpse. She looks dead. The pale pink is not working well. A little bit of lippy goes a long way. It's a trademark trait of this character. Um, she needs it, you know, she needs it. And those eyes, they just look dead and it's because they're light piped and they're not light piped well. Look at the size of the hole on the back. Actually, that's not too bad. That's <laughs> not bad as a battle marks the back of her head. But anyway, the, that hole is all that is bringing light to those tiny eyes. Really, is there a screw? It's not even a screw. I want to pull it apart, take that out and paint it but it doesn't look like I'm gonna have a chance to. The subtle silver on the sides looks okay, but it really needed a little bit of a wash because some of the details just get lost because they're not very deep. Top of the head, nasty gash right there. See that huge sprue chunk just taken out. Um, the off-white is done reasonably well. It's a little bit dirty or maybe they're chips. I'm not sure. The paint coats are very smooth. There's no dirt in it. The details are reasonably sharp. While I'm here, we'll just do articulation. Goes all the way up like that, but the back of her head does pop this um, collarbone area up. See like that? That doesn't tab into anything. There's no tab. There's a little lip there that I think sits on the top of this back bit, but um, it doesn't really... See, look, see the connecting area? It's like half a millimeter, uh, if that. So anyway, up to there and down to there and you can break it up and bring it around a little bit more full 360 all the way around and the tilt which is pretty good so and the ball socket head is nice and tight i was very surprised to find that toy world have added a metallic very subtle metallic speckle to all of the pink plastic on her body it's a very very nice touch that adds a little bit of detail to otherwise undetailed plastic. Like you look at her forearms, it's just very basic, very basic detail, but the speckle adds a bit of curvature to it and a little bit more shape. These sections aren't white. The the arms, the collarbone, the top of the head, they're, they're, they're like an eggshell white. They're like an off-white. And you'd sort of wonder why they did that. It doesn't look the greatest, but it does have a very, very slight pearl, like a 5%. So under certain lights, it does add a lot more shape, does add a bit more detail. Ultimately, I don't think it was worth it because if you look at the shins, these shins are die cast, right? Just needed to insert a little update while I was posing Leia for um, the YouTube thumbnail. The die cast section of the leg has just fallen out. It's not glued in, it's, you know, it's just sitting in there. So I was wrong about the legs. This is just cast white plastic and honestly, it looks better than the painted and <laughs> They've just got this die cast section in the back. That on mine is just sitting in there. And now that, that just comes off. <laughs> yeah. You know, it really needed to be one or the other, I think. If the whole, if all of the white sections on this were this off white color, that would have looked great. If it was all just bright white, that would have looked great as well. Not this 
body of off-white, pure white legs and feet, you know? Um, it's it's just, it's really noticeable, and they've, in my opinion, they've messed that up. There really isn't much other paint detail to speak of. Um, a little bit of gunmetal here on the tummy section of this detail. That's done really well. That's nice and neat in the lines. No spillage, no nothing. A little bit of blue up here, which is done fine. Um, yeah, it's done fine. It's not chipped. It's not scratched. There's, you know, nothing missing. The paint on the bonnet sections is done really well. We've got this clear blue window here, which is done nice. Nice polished look. There's no scratches, no stress marks, no cloudiness, nothing. A little bit of car detail up in here. It's all done. It's all done well. The paint on this, though, uh, it just... I know Toy World isn't known for their paint, but their prototype photo had a decent amount of paint on it, and it looked really good. It's a shame to see that uh, they went backwards. This this figure seems a little bit unfinished. I'm not saying that it looks awful now. Um, it just it would have improved it. It would have improved it a lot. Speaking of looks, though, I am let's just get rid of this box. I am really really digging the design of this. Toy World's other bots are just, they're so IDW, you could never pass them off as G1. But I think Leia has a foot either side of the line equally. She, you can pass her off as IDW, but I think the style, she also fits G1. And I'll just bring in some G, some of the masterpiece bots to compare. So there's Fan Toys Tesla with my super smiley face. There's Open and Play Big Spring with my second super smiley face. And Unique Toys Blurred. And there is First Run KFC Blaster. Fans Toys Coot, who looks a little bit small to me. Masterpiece Daniel, which looks about right. And Masterpiece Magnus, who is just huge. It's, it's hard to judge scale with him. Just look at that. Isn't that a beautiful lineup we have now? That's, this just really tickles my nostalgia. I am loving the way that all of this looks. I think all that I'm left waiting for now is a decent hot rod. Now, I don't really have many Toy World bots to compare it to. Um, none of the movie ones, at least, anyway. But I do have um, Primorion. I think that's how you say it. And I think this was Toy World Space Racer. And finally, here is the Weijang Oversized RC for those who are interested. Let's just get them both in shot. Stand up. There you go. Alright, so let's just quickly check out articulation, which, like the rest of this figure, both surprises and disappoints. Already gone over the head. Now the shoulder uh, is on a ball socket there, all the way around, and thankfully the shape of the ball socket does not impede anything. Look at that, you can get any angle you want. The backpack section obviously does, but you know, that's still pretty far back. And look, you can get it, well, you can get it pretty far back like that. And it is also a very stiff ball socket. Now we do have an upper bicep swivel, which is stupidly tight. It's really, really difficult to do. It's Look, barely, barely wants wants to move, and it's so tiny as well. The bicep is so thin to hold on to. It doesn't really move until this ball socket, look. So you get the ball socket wedged against the chest, and then you can sort of make it move, but it really doesn't want to. Found the easiest way, but probably not the smartest way, is to bend the elbow and hold it at the elbow, and then, yeah, it's still... Yeah, you're putting a lot of pressure on that ball socket. There's, it's just a lot of pressure. Listen. It just, yeah, it's so tight and it's exactly the same on this side. And all of, all of that plastic in there is flexing when I do it. It's just, it's not good. Yeah, it's not good. It's too tight. But anyway, uh, double jointed elbow, which gets you, let's just bend that, bend that get you to there and that is nice and stiff both sides it's not loose nothing uh, with the wrists is just that plug so you get full 360 at the bottom of the ribs here you do get a left to right no forward and back then into the hips now there's a little bit of a clearance issue with this top bit and look I'm getting separation down there what the hell's going on with that that does not want to even squeeze back in the other side's fine Yes, yeah, that's annoying. Anyway, so because this is all painted and there is a little bit of a clearance issue here, I've already got a couple of chips just there. Can you see that? A couple of chips just from this section hitting her ass. So forward and oh, and it's there's no ratchets or anything. It's just um, all friction joints. So you get to there, you can um, <clears throat> extend it out a bit and bring it up a bit more. 
but you do have to expose uh, that transformation joint a little bit. So all the way to there. And that's a nice and stiff joint. So there's no floppiness, nothing. <clears throat> back, you don't really get any back, right, in that position. Because look, the ass is touching the thigh straight away. You have to extend this transformation joint and then sort of get it out, but it's still, it's, it's not going anywhere. And look how much I've extended it out. So that's a little bit lame, but still very tight. Now the outward is all the way out. That's, listen to that. Nice and tight, very tight. And you can almost do the complete splits. Now there is a lower swivel here, right? Just above the knee, but I can't for the life of me get it to, listen, it's just so tight. It's just, oh, it's just it does not want to do it. And it's the same on this side. Now I'm trying to support this leg because Twisting that is also flexing all of this transformation joint up in here, and that that's a small joint with a lot of hinges. But um, listen to that. Yeah, I don't. Oh, and that's some plastic just fell out. You see that? That's shaving plastic off inside the joint. My God. Um, yeah, I won't be doing that too much, but the problem is that upper swivel is important when posing because when you come down to the ankles, there's no ankle swivel, right? There's no swivel. The toe swivels, but none of this swivels. You do get a very cool um, tilt like that, but not back the other way, which sometimes when I'm posing, I do feel like I need it to go back the other way a bit, but you no, know, you just get it to there and that's nice and stiff. And then when you come to the toe, your toe bends all the way. And then you get the whole foot here. I mean, let me just, this also moves the ankle guard. And then you can get, look at that full range on the whole front of the foot. <clears throat> because this is on a ball socket, when you bend it down, you can also twist the foot uh, however you want. So, but the heel itself is just on that single, that single um, rock there. So um, much more articulation out of these feet than I was expecting. And it's, it's good. And uh, you know what, I was surprised given that these are basically high heels, she is really, really stable. And I've got I've got the um, magic scenery bases here, which are full of holes and um, mechanical bits. And, you know, it's not the most stablest um, base, but once you line her feet up right and distribute her weight properly and don't put her heel in a hole, she is really stable. But anyway, I think that about covers all of the articulation. Yep. All right, we're gonna do transformation and see what kind of mess that car comes out as. So the first step is we're gonna raise this back panel up like that and then bring the head forward. Now, these hinges here, they just need to be released a little bit. And to do that, we're gonna untab the chest like that and then this will all come up. Now, this section here needs to all fold out. The instructions don't tell you, the instructions don't tell you to move these shoulders, but I found it easier um, to get clearance if you sort of shimmy these forward a little bit and then bring this up and see this these two arms need to come forward like that so then we've got a little section under here which oh, that's a bitch to get out and it's painted as well so hang on fold that out and then fold the head all the way back inside like that bring this up like that and you can see where we're going with this. With that done, the head comes around into this cavity and just sits in there like that. Now we have to take the hands off for vehicle mode and then we're going to bring these in like that. Let's bring both the shoulders in and then these elbows we want to be pointing out towards the wheels. So we're going to fold them around and then support that plastic and rotate it like that so fold it around rotate it. Oh, i hate doing that it just does not feel right at all and sit them just in there like that and get those elbows as straight as possible now i'm going to take these wheel sections and they're on double hinges all right so we're just going to untab that from this tab hole fold it down now I'm gonna grab this section here and it's on a very, very small hinge just inside there and you've got a tab just in there. Can you see that? And that's gonna go right in the back of the ass. So fold it backward and it's the clearance is not good. It's, it's very tight. 
there we go, in, in. Now that is um, quite difficult to get back out again. So um, it's up to you whether you just leave it in for bot mode or not. All right, so onto the feet. Now with the toe, it, this whole section, the ball socket that it's on, will move at this hinge. So you don't just do that. You've got to actually push the whole thing like that and then fold the toe um, just around the heel. And then once you've done that, we're gonna to come to these front wheel sections and they'll open up on a double hinge. Grab the hips, extend them out. And then we're just going to rotate them around and the whole thing's come undone. Rotate them around like that. And then we need to shimmy these down a little bit or we're never gonna close um, these hatches. These ankle covers, bring them all the way around flat like that. Chuck them in that seal. Bring this all down and tab it in. Reset these arms, tab all that back in. Oh, come on. Oh, just It just seems like at any moment they're just gonna pop out. Um, and then these wheels are on a fold out hinge, so just stick your fingernail in there. And um, yeah, pull that out. There we go, half out. And I think, yep, that's it. And then you grab your pistols and you've got tabs just on the side here. So you tab them in. Now they don't face like dead straight. See, it's on a, it's on a bit of an angle. So then you grab your swords and the little tab hole there goes in the front. So, can I do it with the circular bit? Yeah, I can. All right, so just like that. Do the same on the other side. Just like that. Um, it's garbage. Um, doesn't tab in particularly well. It does tab in, but it's it's a little bit wonky. It's not you know it's not the greatest, but it looks the part, the front of it. But yeah, come on, man, like, are they serious? <laughs> it's just, it's not finished. I mean, Wei Jang did that, and they just put the, that little shield attachment on there. Should They could have done that. They could have made a little crappy shield that just plugs in the back that you never use in bot mode. What were they thinking? That's just... That's a deal breaker. That, that That's an absolute deal breaker for a lot of people. For me, like... Uh, <laughs> uh, come on, Toy World. This surface I've got, I've got the Magic Scenery knockoff Toy World panels. It's not the best for rolling, like that's not toy. Well, it is toy world's fault, actually. They designed this shit. Um, yeah, it's not. I can't demonstrate it on this. Those shoulders are sticking out lower than the wheels, I think. Look at that. Let's try it on here. Nah, it's balancing on the shoulders. No, that's, that's right. Yeah, straight down. And then tab in. Attempt to. No, that's that's how they're meant to be. The shoulders stick out lower than the wheels. Uh, yeah. This, uh, it's lucky it's cheap because uh, it's lucky it's cheap. All right, so is it worth it and should you buy it? I'm gonna say a definite maybe for most people. For me, I feel like it's worth what I paid for it and I don't feel ripped off. I paid about $80 Australian delivered. I probably would have paid that price if this was purely an action figure that didn't even transform, which is what I'm gonna sort of class it as. The bot mode, it looks good. It can be IDW, it can be G1 Masterpiece. It, it will work as both in my opinion. All of the accessories that come with it are pretty good. I like that they went with the swappable hand that just brings so much more character. It does have a lot of good points, insane amount of articulation, some good quality plastics. Some things were too tight, but nothing broke yet, but also has a lot of bad points to it. The white on the die cast shin doesn't match the rest of the body. The white on the hands doesn't match the rest of the body. The paint, where it's done, it's done pretty well, but it is missing a lot. The face just looks dead. There's no life in that face whatsoever. A little bit of lippy will go a long way. Painted eyes would have been better, and just a little bit more into that head. It's such a focus point on RC, and they've mucked it up. Transformation engineering is very basic, and the 
final vehicle mode is just, oh, it's a piece of shit. Don't even bother transfer. You maybe do it once just out of curiosity, but god damn, they just totally messed it up. It's unfinished. It's like all that trouble that Toy World had, and then they had some recent legal issues with Zeta, that Zeta won. It just seems like Toy World run out of money to finish this, and they just said, F it, ship it as is. Let's get some more money coming in. And that's what I feel like they've done. And ultimately, I think it's just going to ruin their chances of selling this product. And that's all I've got for you guys. If you liked my video and you enjoy what I'm doing, please like and subscribe to my channel. Remember to check out my Facebook for daily news and updates on KO and third-party stuff. I have a new Instagram account, hashtag bots and bits, all one word. And as always, guys, thank you very much for your time and thanks for watching.